they were talking about the tangent ratio. It's just one third of the trig ratios that we'll be talking about over the next couple days. So first of all, the tangent ratio is defined as it's not there's not that much. You have most of it's written on your sheet, okay? In a right triangle, we have one right angle and two acute angles. So triangle ABC is a right triangle with acute angle A. Just making sure that we're not talking about the right angle. Okay? The tangent of angle A is defined by the length of the leg that is opposite angle A divided by the length of the leg adjacent to angle A. So if you want to abbreviate and just say tangent of A equals opposite over adjacent, that can save you some writing. So in your first block, you've got a triangle there. Write tangent equals opposite divided by adjacent. And then make sure you label your triangles so you know what we mean by opposite and adjacent. So here's our angle A. The leg that is opposite that angle is the one that's farthest away. Okay, that's BC. This is the opposite leg. Okay, and what does adjacent mean? If you're standing adjacent to someone, you're standing next to them, right? So when we're looking for the adjacent leg, we have to make sure we're talking about the leg that touches it, that makes it, helps form it, but that's not the hypotenuse. So the adjacent leg is the one that is actually next to it and actually helps form that angle. Okay. So in this case, the opposite leg is BC. The adjacent leg is AC. And the next slide, we'll see this with numbers. Okay, everybody have this written down? Give me a couple seconds. All right, on the next slide, we want to figure out what these ratios are. So when we talk about a ratio, we're just talking about a fraction. What number is opposite the angle? What number is adjacent to it? Which one's next to it? So when we look at this next slide, I've drawn the triangle out twice so I can label opposite and adjacent, but you don't have to have to draw it twice. We want to know what the tangent of angle A is and what the tangent of angle B is. So our first step is to, first of all, identify angle A and decide which one is opposite angle A. So here's our angle A. Which side is opposite angle A? 15. So if it helps to write opposite until you're used to these, you can do that. Which number is adjacent to angle A? 36. The hypotenuse is your 39, and 36 is the adjacent. So if I want to write the fraction or the ratio of the sides for tangent, I write the tangent of angle A is what over what? 15 over 36, because I need the opposite divided by the adjacent. So that's half of our answer. Braxton, did you have a question? Okay. That's half our answer. They want us to write it as a, as a fraction. And then they want us to give a decimal rounded to four places. So how do I find this decimal to four places? Divide, yep, 15 divided by 36. And we're going to write it out to four places. So 15 divided by 36 is 0.416 repeating. So that last six is going to become a seven. That's four decimal places. So when we ask you for the ratios as fractions and, and actually ask you to divide it out, we're going to want four decimal places. When we ask you for sides, we'll only want one decimal place. Okay? That was the tangent of angle A. Let's look at the tangent of angle B. Here's my angle B. 
Which side is opposite angle B? The measure of that side is 36. This is opposite. Adjacent is the 15, right? And the hypotenuse is still the 39. So if I want the tangent of angle B, I want the opposite over the adjacent, which is what over what? And that will be divided out 2.4. You could write 0, 0, 0. There's no need to. Okay? Comes out nicely. What questions do you have about this so far? Yes. So you leave it as an improper fraction and you don't have to reduce. Okay? Great question. That's it so far. Okay? Other questions that you have? Maddie, do you have a question? Okay. So we're good? All right, next, que next slide. All right, now I want you to make sure you know how to put these things into your calculator. And it's very, very important that you are in degree mode in your calculator. So if I ask you to find the tangent of 12, I'm asking you to find out what is the opposite over the adjacent of an angle with 12 degrees, a triangle with a 12 degree angle. So on your calculator, you want to type in, most of you, if you have a calculator that wants it in the normal written way, you're going to type in tangent of 12. So check your calculator to see if there's a little DEG or a little D on your screen. It should say tan, and you don't want the negative one part. Okay? So you want tan, and you're going to type in 12. If it says tan negative one, you don't want to go to that. That's the, that's the shift of it. Okay? So first I have to make sure that my mode is in, in degrees. And when I press tan and 12, and press equal, you should get 0.2126. Okay? It is. You, and you are in degrees. So. I didn't do that. All right, so we're going to go to tangent. You're right. Trig. Tan. And 12. This is trigonometry? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, if you got a different number than I did, hold on. You should have gotten 0.2126. When you round it to four decimal places. Okay? So if you didn't get that, you're fine. Yep, that's perfect. You just have, yep, you're fine. Because when, when I do 0 0.212, this 6 is going to make it a 7. And it may just store, the di store it differently on the calculator. Okay? You're fine. You're good. Okay? Perfect. Did everybody get 0.2126? Okay. Okay, so you've got to change yours to degree mode. To change yours to degree, you're going to hit math. Sorry, not math mode. And notice it's in radians. You arrow down, and you go to the right, and you press enter. And now when we go second and quit, it's right there. And you do the same thing, tan of 12. So I'm going to do a second entry to make it do it a second time. Now I press enter. And you get the right answer. So that's in mode? And that's in mode, yep. And it should stay in degrees now for you unless you change it to radians. Okay? Does everybody get 0.2126? Cassidy, work on your test, please. Work on your test. Okay? All right, so here we go. I want you to find the tangent of 77 now. Four point three three one five because we're rounding it to three decimal four decimal places. Okay. If you have a calculator that doesn't let you enter it like you would read it, you have to put seventy seven then tan. Okay. Are you in degrees? Um you're in radians. See the radians? 
Okay, we're going to press the degree, that's in gradients, and this is degree. Now try tangent of 77. Okay, now you're set. Everybody's got the right number now, right? You know how to run your calculator. Okay, here we go. So now we have these ratios stored in our calculator. There's a whole table of values. Back when I was in school, they had no calculator that did this. So we had to have a table of values in the back of our book, and we had to go look it up. It's bad, okay? So what we're doing now is we've stored all these in our calculator, and we want you to help us figure out what the value of x is, okay? So what will this say if I write it as a, as a tangent? A tangent of 56 equals x over 13. Why x over 13? Opposite and adjacent. Good. Okay. Everybody good? Good. All right. How do we solve this? We're going to cross multiply. And 13 times the tangent of 56 will be our x. Okay, so pull up your calculator and type 13 tan 56 if, that, if your calculator goes in straight away. Some of you have to do 56 tangent and then times 13. Did everybody get 19.3 if we round to one decimal spot? Point? Okay, nine. four for the ratios and one for the sides. Brandon. Okay. So four for the ratios. Braxton. Four for the ratios and one for the sides. So our side is 19.3. Okay. Let's look at another example. So now I have my 61 degrees. Riley, what's my equation going to say if I put this into the tangent? Equals what? X over 22? 22 over x, right? Opposite over adjacent, right? It does. It's really important that we get the right, right ratio, okay? So we want the opposite over the adjacent. So we want 22 over x. So you, have, you need to write this down. You're not just plugging things into your calculator. When you're working these problems for, for me, you're writing these down. Now, how do we solve this equation? Cross-multiply, right? We're going to take x times the tangent of 61 and let that equal 22 and then divide by tangent of 61. So the sooner you learn a quick shortcut, the faster you'll be at doing these. But you can welcome to write the steps out. But if we want x to be up here, it's going to switch spots with this tangent of 61. Okay? So 22 divided by the tangent of 61. Okay? Plug it into your calculator. And to two decimal places, or to one decimal place, sorry, 12.2. X is 12.2. Okay. We good so far? All right. I have one more example of this type of problem. Okay. Do you want to see it worked or are you okay with them? One more time. Okay. So we have an angle, 25 degree angle. 
okay? What's it going to say? What's our ratio going to say? 12 over x. So tangent of 25 is 12 over x. These two are switching spots. So x will be 12 divided by tangent of 25, right? And when we take 12 divided by tangent of 25, Did everybody get 25.7? That's your answer. Okay. Easy enough, right? Okay. Now you know what the tangent's about. It's just a ratio of sides on a right triangle, the opposite over the adjacent, and we can use the values stored in our calculator to help figure out those sides if we know the angles. Okay? All right, so next slide. We want to talk about our special right triangles. This isn't going away, and it's going to help you remember and learn them. Okay? Here's a 30-degree angle in a right triangle. Okay? Will, give me a number just off the top of your head. Five. Okay, so five is the number. We're going to let the side opposite 30 be 5. He just picked 5. Okay? So 5 is the side opposite 30. What would be the hypotenuse of this triangle then? This is the short leg. What do we do to get the, the hypotenuse? It would be 10. Okay? Because remember when we started these, we had a right triangle or a, um, an equilateral triangle. And if this is 5, this would be 5. So the whole thing would be 10. Okay? Because we know our special right triangles. If you have a short leg and you're going to the hypotenuse, you multiply by 2. If you know your short leg and you're going to your long leg, you multiply by what? Square root of 3. Okay? So this one will be 5 square roots of 3. Because the short leg to the long leg, you multiply by the square root of 3. All right, so if I want the tangent of 30 degrees, what am I going to do? Which one's opposite the 30 degrees? Which one's adjacent? Okay. So we write the 5 and the 5 radical 3. Okay. When we want an exact value of this, we can't use the decimals that get all rounded and so forth. Okay. So when we have 5 over 5, what happens? They cancel out. So we get 1 over the square root of 3. But we can't have a radical in the bottom, so what do we do? Yeah, bring it to the top and remove the square root sign as the shortcut. It'll be square root of 3 over 3. Okay? That's the tangent of 30. Okay, Brandon, give me another number, not 5. Whatever. Nine, okay? Now let's let nine be our short leg. Okay? If nine's the short leg, what's the hypotenuse? Eighteen. If nine's the short leg, what's the long leg? Nine square root of three. What's the tangent of 30 degrees? Opposite over hypotenuse, right? 9 over 9 square roots of 3. 9's cancel, right? 1 over the square root of 3, rationalized, is still... So it doesn't matter how big your triangle is, if your short leg's 5 or 9 or 652, they will always be in this ratio, the sides will. The opposite and the hypotenuse. Make sense? 
Or do you want to see me do it again with another number? We're good? Okay. So let's talk about a couple of vocab things. If I'm standing outside the school and I'm looking at the, a bird on the top of the power lines, okay? If I was looking straight ahead, that would be a horizontal view. But if I'm looking up, I'm looking at an angle of elevation, okay? With the horizontal to that angle, it's called the angle of elevation, okay? If I am at the top of the Eiffel Tower or at the top of the, the um, World Trade Center Freedom Tower, or if I'm at the top of the, um, the Statue of Liberty and I'm looking down, that's called the angle of, not elevation, but depression, okay? So that's the angle of depression. The neat thing about it is two parallel lines cut by a transversal. This the angle of depression will be equal to the same angle of elevation at the bottom. Okay? So I have one quick application for you. If we're looking, if we're on a plane flying somewhere and we're looking down at something, that would be an angle of depression. We can estimate how far away we are from that object if we know our height right? And that angle of depression that we're looking at. So they use this in navigation in, air, in airlines. They use it, um, use trig functions to find the distance across a lake and to survey roads and so forth when you're a surveyor and you're mapping out a new road. So here's an airplane flying a height of two miles above the ground, okay? For two miles above the ground, we're what, 5,280 times two so we're at 10,560 feet, making our descent, okay? So we're up here two miles above the ground, and we have looked down at the airport, and this is a, a bad drawing because that's certainly not a two-degree angle, but we have a 2.4-degree angle of depression. How would we find out how far we are away from the airport? How would we find out what X is? Tangent of 2.4 equals 2 over x. Does everyone see where Peyton got that? Okay. How do we solve that? Yeah, switch the x and the tangent of 2.4. x comes up. 2 is going to be divided by the tangent 2.4. And when you work this out, you'll get a bigger number. Okay, what did you get? 47.7 miles. Yep, tangent of 2.4. You should get 47.7 miles. Okay, because this is really supposed to be an itty bitty tiny little angle. And so this is going to be a much longer distance than this. It's not drawn to scale. Not every time. The first one I didn't. Mm -hmm. On this first example, back here when we talked about these, it's not always the angle, it doesn't always switch them. On this one, we had tangent of 56 equals x over 13. So because the x was opposite, we got to take the tangent of 56 times 13. But when the x is not the opposite, when it's the adjacent, then the tangent of 61 was 22 over x, so we had to switch the two. Okay? So be careful. Make sure that you're watching which one's opposite and which one's adjacent. All right? Your assignment's at the bottom of your sheet. There aren't very many problems. I just want you to practice a little bit so you have it fixed in your memory. And then we'll come back and talk about more, more of this and then the sine and the cosine, two more buttons on your calculator on Tuesday when we get back from break. All right.